Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about me jumping from Fedora 36, actually 37. I upgraded 37, thought, you know what, I need to jump anyhow because I need to install something different on a box and try it and do a video on it. So I picked Arco Linux B i3 edition. But before that, I want to say, before we take a look at it, I want to say thank you to all of you who have subscribed because we're at 566 subscribers and our newest subscriber is Brandon Brownie. He subscribed about six hours ago. So thank you guys so much. I'm humbled for it. And without further ado, let's take a look at Arco Linux B i3 edition. So when you install it, you get this desktop without the well i have it launches but i killed it the actual arco linux welcome app which has the tweak tool ability in there to update things install software uh, is what's in there and you'll see that if you decide to run it and install it download it from arco linux uh it's the b version where you can choose a desktop install it or run it you know burn it onto a usb and try it as a live iso do whatever you want but either way that you'll get that app i've deleted it because welcome apps are awesome but you know i don't really use them as much as probably people would like me to <laughs> i just don't like them so the key bindings to learn are pretty much so these i'm going to explain to you right now this will launch you now also another thing i killed is a conky that eric dubois puts at startup which actually gives you your key bindings that he's already pre-programmed in here and set up that's why i would suggest that you know a lot of people say oh manjaro i3 is great for new new to linux users to start with if they want to learn a uh uh or a uh, actual window manager or even seasoned ones that are jumping to the window manager world well, you know what? I'm going to go out and say that Arco Linux B i3 edition that Eric Dubois has set up, I think, trumps Manjaro. Manjaro has a problem with signing their keys and keeping them signed, which they've done well for the last year now, but they have had issues with that. Um, also, they hold back a lot of packages that are not the latest and greatest or most current, um, and so that helps as with the new whole, you know, Linux 6.0 kernel fiasco that happened. They weren't hit by that bug for because of that. But as a rule, it tends to hold you back on stuff. So that's why a lot of people don't like them. I think they're okay. There's no problem with it. But I actually would say that this is, is way better to start with, to be honest with you, because he has everything completely configured in it set up you know what programs you need and you can find that out through the configuration file which i'm going to show you here in a minute and you know it gives you an idea so if you decide to want to make your own or download vanilla arch and select the i3 window manager and make your own it gives you a great starting point or at least where to learn what you need that you need to to make it nice so that's something to remember so the key bindings that he has set like your window enter is going to open your terminal. If you hit your window, it was F12, but I changed it to configuration file. But if I hit my window key or the mod key, which I'm going to start referring to it as a mod key, your mod key plus R, it opens up one of the launchers that he's got installed, which is known as Rofi. Now, it doesn't look like this when you launch it. This is the theme that I've applied to it, which is in the Rofi. If you look, Rofi, see theme selector there? When I hit that, it opens up. And the one that I have, as you can see, where it, the current theme is default, which is not correct. The one that I have installed is the Arthur by Cubal, which you'll find it right here. I, what I did is I hit the air, up arrow key to go to the bottom of the list. And then I go up here and I, right here, this is the one I look for. This one right here, and that's the one that I've applied. So I'm gonna hit escape to get out of that. So the Rofi's your one launcher, right? So we're going to hit escape to kill that. Then the other one that you have, if you hit the mod shift and D, you get what up at the top, which is known as D menu. In here, you can type stuff like nitrogen or 
say Firefox, right? And you hit enter and it launches Firefox. Now, as you can see, it split the window real estate in half. That's what a window manager does. It has gaps and borders on it. So that's how you do it. Now, say I want Firefox to be full screen. I hit the mod key and F and it launches it to full key, to full screen. Now, I typed in ZZ, I don't know, I hit the keyboard, my fault, but anyhow, it does that. So, either way, so there's that. So now to untoggle full screen, you hit the window, there are the mod key and F again, and there it is. Now, to shut a focused window, you want to hit um, the mod, shift, and Q, or mod Q. He has a double key binding set up for a lot of these things. So now let's go ahead and open up a terminal, open up another terminal, open up another terminal, open up another terminal, open up another terminal. As you can see, that's what auto tiling does. It share, it splits the real estate of its own. It's, it's a very nice tool. You can turn it off in the actual configuration file and it will be fine. Or you can uh, uninstall the actual tile, auto tiling from it and it won't do it. Then it'll become manual where way if you turn it off it'll become manual where you use key bindings to tell it whether it's going to split that window vertically or horizontally but so we're going to, to close we're going to close out a few of them right boom there we go let's open up a terminal there's that so now we want to move the focus container right so you're going to hit the mod key and then the arrow keys on the keyboard or you're going to use your a or your h j k l to move up, down, left, and right, which are your VIN key bindings, or in semicolon. JKL, not H, sorry, JKL and semicolon. Although he, I think he, as a standard rule, that's where I3 comes at. But for his, I think he changed it to the H, JKL. Um, so that, that's how you can change the focus window. And then we can tell the focus window because it's the one that has an actual highlighted blue border to it. See the blue border moving, changing? That's how you know which one you're on. So if I hit kill, it closes that one out. So like, let's go ahead and launch Firefox, which is gonna be the window or the mod key in F1. So Firefox launched, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kill the actual terminal. So we're gonna hit the mod kill and there's that. Cause what we did is we highlighted it. So let's try that again. We're gonna open up our terminal, mod plus enter opens up terminal. It's highlighted, but now I'm gonna kill the Firefox. So I'm gonna move and highlight the, con the container mod Q and it killed it. And that's how that works. Now, to launch your file manager is gonna be your mod shift enter, launches your, your file manager, which is great. So this is where a lot of your dirty work's at. Now, if you notice, I have my dot files, which are these files that are ending, they start with dot, like dot config, dot cache, dot local, all that. Those are normally hidden. To unhide those, when you launch your file manager, it's going to be hidden. Just like this. This is initially what you're going to get. So to unhide them or hide them, you hit Control H. There you go. So now you're going to find anything. Like if you want to edit your bash, you can open this up with Vim. This is where you can put in aliases. Like right here, he put in aliases. For update, sudo pacman syuu, right? Or is what th this is the actual what you would type, right? So if I want to type in my terminal update, this is where the command it's going to run. So for update, you have this, up eight, update. You know, he's set up quite a few aliases for update, which are, you know, obvious typos that people make. For listing, these are ones that people make as well that you could use to do different lists, different types of lists. And then colorize the grep output. You can do grep and then color auto. E grip is this one and F grip. So, and then this is where you could add other aliases if you want to do set up like, um, uh, I don't know, OBS, but launch it in color. You can do OBS and then it would be grep, whatever, and it would launch it in color or whatever. So, I, I mean, that's just a poor example. I don't even know if that'll work. I'm just saying you can type in alias and this, and so this is one that you can edit. I'm gonna close out Vim, and then we're gonna go into the comp file, config file, and this is where all your other things are, are at, like your nitrogen configuration, Kvantum, Thunar, all these things you, could, you can configure, right? But uh, we're gonna predominantly look at the, here's your polybar, which is where your polybar config is, right? Which this one here, you can open up. And this is where you can set 
what's shown down here. This is what's running right here. This is uh, down at the bottom here. Is this is all of this right here? It gives you colors and 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 different actual modules that you can put in there. So and extra stuff. So these are all the things that you can configure. Tons of things. Go to the Polybar Wiki to find out exactly what you can and can't do with it, and you'll be surprised. It's so much more customizable. That's not the standard. It comes with i3. The one that comes with i3 standard out of the box. Whenever you do vanilla. Arch or, or vanilla i3 install, you're looking at the i3 status bar. So polybar is one that you add, that you could um, put in place, and you do that through downloading polybar with its config here, and then setting it up to run in to start in the uh, sh and killing it in the i3 config or removing the status bar, commenting that out. So. This is the i3. Now, he's added a lot of themes in here for the i3 config uh, folder. Uh, he's added a couple scripts um, that work here. And then uh, here is the main config we want to look at. We're not going to worry about this polybar config because that's, I don't know why that's there. That shouldn't be there. I think it might be something that I did on mistake. Uh, but anyhow, there's this one that we're going to look at, this config right here, which is the i3 config. And then this is the PyCom config. And this is the i3 status config, this i3 status bar config, where you could add certain things there too, if you were using the i3 status bar, but we're not. So we're going to take a look at the, the actual config version for i3 first and look at what he put in here. So this is a great place to go to if you want to learn your key bindings, where your key bindings are that are set. So you can look through here, and this is kind of a, a glossary or definition, key definition glossary here, where mod equal is set below, right, which is right here, the super key, right, which is the mod four key, mod one is the alt key. If you want to make the alt key the actual modification key, then you, move, you can edit this to be mod one. Uh, so either way, like right here, see, mod one right here. So these are all different keys that are in use, and this is the, the glossary for it. Like the mod four is the one that is your defined mod key. Here is the Vim key or motion key, which is the L, J, I was right, so he didn't change it to H. Like most people change this to H, J, K, L, you know what I mean? Instead of semicolon, but it is what it is. This is the way it is. Um, and I use the arrow keys a little more than anything because that's just what I like. Here's where you can, for a single and dual screen, you can see where you can set your displays and the variables for it. Basically, it's an X render um, command. And then here you could set which is the first monitor or the second monitor. And where that plays into, comes into effect and plays into the game here is, um, let's go ahead and make this full screen. Uh, by hitting the mod and F key makes it full screen. Uh, this comes into play because this is where you can actually assign workspaces. If you look just down below it, you can assign workspaces to certain displays. So this is basically, this command right here is setting first monitor to be my HDMI output. My second monitor is going to be my display port, right? So... When you look here, workspace one, two, three, four, five, and six are all going to be, or one, two, three, four, five, are going to be generated onto my first monitor. Second monitor is going to be six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, you can adjust these any way you want. You can get rid of this so that it doesn't do that uh, if you don't want it to do that. Uh, to move workspaces, these are the key bindings that will tell you how to move from workspace. Like, say you have three workspaces on one monitor open, you can do mod shift, and then you can actually hit the number one, two, or three and switch to those. Now, if you want to move a container from one workspace to another workspace, these are the ones. Uh, what I do not have is moving a whole workspace to another monitor because they're actually assigned to monitors. If I didn't have assigned to monitors, then that's one you can do, which I think is control... Shift M will move it from monitor to monitor, different monitors. Um, I can't remember the key binding guy. You can look it up on Google and find it or go to the i3 wiki and you can find a lot of stuff. So that is something to, to remember or to, to look 
look up if you should how to move it from monitor to monitor if you decide you don't want to assign workspaces to monitor like they are here. So there's that. Now for D menu, these are the launchers that they have or menus that they have in launcher, like they have the XFCE app finder and all that, and you strike these key combinations for it uh, to launch those. Uh, there, there's tons of stuff in here. Um, but most importantly, those are the one the, the moving from the container from one one desktop to or desktop, if you want to call it or workspace to another, you know, to or from one monitor to another monitor, that, that's a way to do it. Um, uh, changing focus here, like I said, mod left, mod for the for the actual what you would call it, the arrow keys. Um, you could do mod shift as well to um, move the focus window. I mean, he's got different ways of doing it. And to move left, to move the actual containers, mod shift plus left will actually move the container. So, and for instance, let's go ahead and open up a terminal here. All right, say I want to move the terminal left. It'll be mod shift, and then left, or up. No, for left and right, yep. Up, down, whichever. See how I'm doing that? I'm using that with my mod by using mod shift and then the arrow keys. So let's go ahead and close that out. I'm going to make this full screen again. So this is where you could learn your key bindings. Yes, some of them can be difficult to, to learn at first, but as you use them, like anything that you do, practice makes perfect. Repetitiveness, muscle memory, whatever you want to call it, will make it seamless. You'll learn them after a while. I'm a very forgetful person. I have had difficulty remembering increasingly more over the years, uh, whether it's age or whether it's just trauma from, you know, many things that have happened to me in life through being in the military and, you know, just other things in life that, you know, accidents that have happened. I don't know. I don't want to put a finger on it, but I just admit that it's happening. If I can remember this kind of stuff, I know that you guys can. So, and you have the built in cheat sheet. Just go right here. This will help you. Also, Eric Dubois put that wonderful conky on there that'll help you. I, I three or Manjaro I three does the same thing. It's a great idea. So anyhow, go here and you can find stuff. If you go down further, there's tons of other things that you can edit. These are really, you know, where the rising of i3s at is right here. You can rice the desktop. You can rice the actual layout. You can rice the configuration layout by doing the tiling uh, or whichever you want. The title bars, colors, everything. This is it, you know. So this is the the ricer's dream. If you want to, you know, learn a lot about Linux and actual ricing and getting appearances to look like it was, this is where you want to go. I3 it will teach you a lot from learning how to do X render scripts to learning how to do you know, finding actual colors by going online and finding actual digital hex numbers for the colors, all that stuff. So if you want to learn, this is a place to go right here. Set up I3 and go learn. And then at the bottom is usually where you do the bar, where he has the bar. And so like command status I3 config right here. This is where the I3 status is, is set up. But he's using polybar, so he launches that, and he got rid of the. That's why these are blocked out. Um, there, the bar is is not being used at all. So that's where you would make any adjustments to the i3 status bar is there, or go to the actual i3 status bar configuration file. So we're going to close out of that. So now we'll look at the i3 configuration status bar. This right here is where you can add different things to the i3 status bar if you want to use it hard drive sensor, you know, battery, all this stuff. So, um, and this is the order which you can have them come up. The CPU usage, load, disk, volume, and time, right? So, which is kind of, oh, that's what this 90% is, my CPU. Um, this is exactly what the layout is. So, there's that. Oh, shoot. Let's open up that again. We're going to go to config. I closed out my config file. We're going to go to i3. And then the other one that we're going to look at is your PyCom conf, right? So this here is where you can set your transparency for your windows to be transparent like this or blurred like that. Um, also, you can do rounded corners in here. You could set 
um, fade in and out, you know, kind of like the old uh, comp is days. That's kind of what this is. So, I mean, there's different modules and different things you could adjust and you could add into here. Go to their wiki and you could read on a lot of that or look on YouTube and find a video blogger like myself or a YouTuber like myself that has actually did a blog or a video on how to, you know, customize this. Um, now, I will tell you, before you do any of that stuff, um, make a backup. Copy and paste either to a thumb drive or to another folder or even in the same folder, just rename it as in, you know, PyCom backup, whatever. Just make a backup of it so that that way, should you bork it for some reason, you could always revert back. That's always a good rule of thumb. And it'll allow you to be able to recover a lot easier. Also, install Time Shift or Snapper on here and have Snapper do the automatic snaps of when you update and save so that you can actually roll back, you know, that way. I mean, this is i3... And oh, this is a good overview of i3, what it looks like. And this is, again, what I, I can't stress enough. i3 is a great place to learn a lot about Linux in the rising part and how to make things work. I mean, you've got a couple of other ones out there that are that require more scripting, more coding, like, you know, Xmonad, um, Awesome Window Manager, all of them. They, they all require scripting and coding to a degree. But some are different are written in different languages like Haskell or Rust or, you know, you know, C++ or whatever, or Java, even some of them are Python, actually, um, not Java, Python. Uh, and so um, they're, they're, they're all written in different languages. So you can find one that works with whatever language you might be comfortable with or know, or if you don't know any, start off with i3. Um, I think it's POSIX that, that it uses, but either way, I mean, it's just, it's great. It's very great. It's, it's, it's good. To, to learn, it'll teach you a lot. It, the one from, like I said, Arco Linux comes completely loaded out of the box with all the stuff you need, all the different applications to draw your wallpaper, your editor, and your terminal. Because when you download the vanilla i3, you actually, like if you're doing Arch Linux i3 install from the, the, the installer, Arch install installer that they have now for vanilla Arch. When you do that, you want to tell it to install a terminal emulator. You want to tell, have it install, you know, the actual i3 desktop. You want to have it install the actual uh, ed text editor and a web browser so that that way you can at least launch and also D-menu, an actual launcher like Rofi or D-menu, whichever one, doesn't matter. You want it to launch those so that that way, oh, and a file manager, sorry, a file manager as well. I keep forgetting file manager, always do. A file manager so that that way you can at least launch a file manager and figure out what programs you have that are installed, that if you might have forgot, whatever are in there, or launch your, your Firefox and have solutions on what you need to do in case you get bored and you're jumping from one to this to doing it to by all setting it up completely by yourself. So those are things to remember. Now, that being said, if you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below. Uh, also, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and share, please. Thanks for what you guys do. Thanks for giving me the time of day to be with you guys. And y'all keep on doing what you do and stay blessed. And y'all keep on Linuxing.